Hey, welcome back to another anti-debugging video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Find Window. Now, Find Window has a couple of different versions. Find Window A, Find Window W, Find Window EXA, Find Window EXW. Uh, you can really use any of them to achieve the same goal. But the idea here is that we're going to provide two different ways of sort of doing this through Find Window. One of them, we're going to provide a class name for a window. Uh, that is the class name of sort of like a popular debugger or two popular debuggers. And another one is to use the actual title of proper debugger. This particular way of doing things is a little limiting, and we'll kind of talk about why that's the case. There are other methods that allow you to have a lot more control over this, but this is a very basic method of using this find window uh, API, Windows 32 API. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. This is the gauntlet application that kind of just runs through and executes everything one by one. We're going to comment out all of these checks and we're going to just do check window class name. Next, we'll do just check window name. So what happens here when I run this? Essentially, we're going to create two different class names or check for two different debuggers, Ollie debug and immunity debugger. Um, another thing that we'll do is provide null to the second parameter of find window. So window, find window, no matter which version you're using, um, will take the first two parameters as class name or pointer to a class name and a window name. If you provide null to one, then it checks the other. So what is a class name? So let me go ahead and open up Ollie Debug here, and then I will load uh, this WinLister tool. Um, WinLister is going to tell us some information about the windows that are running or applications that are running on your system. So I'll find the Ollie Debug, double click it. Um, and it tells us the class name is Ollie Debug, right? Which might lead us to believe that it's just a mirror of the actual window name itself. Let's go ahead and find Immunity Debugger. I'll run this. And the class name is just ID. So the class name is really just a class name of the window to try to represent uh, different windows that might be represented or related to the same uh, application. So class name could be Immunity debugger and a different window could have a different window name, but they're all grouped together under that same common class name. The problem with using a class name is that sometimes they're pretty generic and you can't really be certain what is actually running. So for example, if I open up X32 debug, X64 debug, uh, it's gonna tell us QT. So QT is a framework for building interfaces. So it's cross-platform, meaning I could build my, my graphical user interface on top of Windows, Linux, Mac, and it all kind of runs seamlessly. This is generic in the sense that this doesn't tie anything to the actual debugger. And in fact, if I open up Binary Ninja, we'll see that Binary Ninja also uses Qt, and that is Qt 515 instead of Qt 5. So there's two different versions, but there's really nothing specific about this that says this is Binary Ninja. So you really shouldn't react to the, the fact that there might be a debugger running. Um, so let's go ahead and run uh, this. Actually, let me just run it with Ollie Debug running. So we were caught by it. Let me close this and run it again. Congratulations, you made it. And that's all thanks to that class name. So if I was taking a look through this, of course, I would see Ali Debug as a string, but if we were checking for Immunity Debugger and there's more of like an abstract name for the thing that we're checking for, um, it might be better to check this because it doesn't really stick out. So ID is below the threshold that strings normally get auto-referenced as. So in this particular case, the fact that there is a two-character C string, usually they need to be four characters in order to automatically resolve because the chances of just randomly coming into two characters and a null byte that uh, looks like a C string is really high. So we need more characters to sort of auto resolve that. So chances are this isn't going to pop out as somebody has anti-debugging check, but the fact that you're using find window is a dead giveaway, right? All right, so let's take a look at the check window name. And you'll notice I'm very specific here in the check window names that I'm using. Check window name in itself uh, as a call for um, the find window isn't a really good method either. And we'll kind of take a look at why. So let me go ahead and rebuild this solution. And the reason why is that the name of the window can change from time to time. All right. So let me go ahead and run this guy. Now it says caught by find window window name. But let's say we were like inspecting threads at the time that this ran. Now it says, congratulations, we made it. 
it's because the actual title of the window has changed and we're no longer within the CPU field, right? If I kind of minimize all of these, so I'm kind of looking around at different windows, now it's just immunity debugger. So to use this method, I would have to go to each one of these different windows, patches and breakpoints and everything else to try to build out a list of all of these and check each one using find window one, one by one. There is a way to essentially create a snapshot of all running processes. We can check this out in a different method uh, and essentially then go through that entire list of processes, looking at the start of them to see if it matches something. Since the Ollie debug is a common starting point for all of the window names, um, that's a, probably a better method to use than find window, just something to be aware about. Now, if you've ever seen videos of people debugging online using Ollie debugger, especially when trying to um, modify video games, patch video games, hack video games, um, you might see that their uh, immunity debugger or, or Ollie window name is completely different. Like up here, instead of saying immunity debugger, it'll just be a bunch of garbage. Like they rolled their face across the keyboard. And the reason for that is a lot or a very, very simplistic way of checking for debuggers for anti-cheat systems is to take a look at all running processes and try to enumerate and look at common cheating tools, right? So it might look for cheat engine, or it might look for something, a tool that somebody has provided on an online forum that they're just checking for to see if it exists there, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can employ this type of method, but in order to make sure that we can bypass at least that simple check is we can just throw random crap into that. And there's no way that a simple check is ever going to find that. It's not gonna know just based on that name that it's a debugger being attached to the process, right? Um, so those are some things to consider. Find window name or find window is uh, certainly a method that can help you, but there are some weird quirks to it, both in the class and the window name that you should probably be concerned about or at least know of. Uh, until next time, uh, happy debugging.